Bye. The fight against coronavirus has the option. But there's so much noise drowning out the news. Talking heads, broadcast messages, press releases. They're telling you their side, but you just want the facts. And that's why you come to me. I give you the statistics without spin. Out of 116 million working age Nigerians, 35.5 million are employed full time. That's 30%. I give you the context. I give you the history. I fight fake news with facts. Kayode. Let me talk. No, Kayode, I will, I will let you talk. Kayode. Kayode, I will let you talk if you let me talk. Kayode. That's why more and more Lagosians are tuning in. Half a million Lagosians. 720,000. 970,000. Over 1 million Lagosians. They know that if you give me your afternoon, I will give you hard facts. You know, Sandra at all to going beyond the headlines and focus on the facts. I am Sandra Ezekwasili, and these are your hard facts. Hello, Lagos. Good afternoon. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili, and these are your hard facts. First hard fact of the day, 295 confirmed COVID cases uh, from yesterday. 81 were in the FCT. I still don't have the Lagos numbers uh, from the NCDC uh, Facebook page yet. I'm not sure whether that's because we had no confirmed cases or whether it's just not been uploaded yet. But when I confirm, I'll let you know. Uh, in the meantime, please take your precautions. The third wave is, is dying down, so we could don't let it... Um, catch you on its way out and don't go out unless you can't avoid it and when you do go out wear your mask maintain your distance from people wash and sanitize your hands frequently let's keep each other safe let's keep ourselves safe i have a great show lined up for you today starting with the big three let's talk about the unfortunate murder of dr chike akunyeli dora akunyeli's widower then let's talk about the governor of kaduna el rafai saying that it is foolish for southern governors to demand rotational presidency. And then, let's talk about Governor El Rafai also telling Kaduna citizens to prepare for a telecoms shutdown. Today is Wednesday, and I'm happy to bring you the glass ceiling, where we'll talk about the physical toll on work-at-home spouses. Yes, I know that I said last week was, uh, you know, when we'll wrap up our conversation about work-at-home spouses. But I saw a new angle uh, to what uh, work-at-home spouses had to de- ha- have to deal with. A woman is trying to find a hospital that will give her a fake prescription for bed rest. So let's have that conversation about uh, about work at home spouses, the physical toll of being a work at home spouse. Let's have that conversation at four o'clock. I'm looking forward to it. It's also uh, Balogun and Broad Day. So we're going to talk about the e Naira, the digital currency that CBN announced that they're going to start on October. It's even going to launch on October 1. So I'll be continuing my talk from last week with Chief Andy Oboforibo. It's the realest business show on the radio, right? So uh, we try to show you how these uh, big headlines really affect your businesses. Uh, that's part of why you've made Hard Facts the number one current affairs show in the city. One million Lagosians cannot be wrong. So thank you uh, for tuning in every day. As usual, I have headlines, business and sports updates every hour on the hour. But right now, let's get into today's big three. It's 10 minutes at the moment past three o'clock. Is Akunili's death being politicized? Is El Rafai right about the call for rotational presidency? And will a telecoms shutdown work better in Kaduna than it has in Zamfara? Those are your big three. Lagos, let's talk. We've got numbers. I hear the, the mail lines are back up. 0700-993-993-993. Uh, women and men will have to call that number because now that that one is back up, our number for women is down, which is sad. I don't know what the service providers are doing, but you have to get your 
your act right. Get your act together. Stop messing with our shows. Eh? All right. Uh, if you are abroad, you can join the show uh, via Skype. Just call us on Skype. Search for us uh, at Nigeria Info FM and give us a call via Skype and we'll connect you to the live studio. If you cannot call, send us a message via WhatsApp. WhatsApp is OHO 959-75805. Our first story is the senseless murder of Dr. Chike Akunili. He's the widower of late Professor Dora Akunili, who was Director General of NAVDAC, as well as Minister for Information. According to reports, gunmen killed Dr. Akunili in Anambra State on Tuesday. Today, the Senate observed a minute's silence for him based on a point of order raised by Senator Uche Ekunife. Akunyili's murder has shocked the nation. Unfortunately, we can't exactly call it an isolated incident. We've seen lots of cases of robberies, kidnappings and murders across the country. And the victims have been both public figures and everyday uh, 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 citizens. But when a family member of a public servant like Dr. Akunyili is the victim, people often go from shock to speculation. And you start to see lots of stories and lots of theories. And so right from yesterday, we started getting all sorts of speculations. People were claiming that, uh, oh, it's different groups. You know, different people blaming different groups with different agendas. Some said her some said herdsmen killed him, but others were like, How can you say herdsmen killed him at some war junction? If you're if you're from Anambra, Inugu, you know war junction war junction, you know. Uh people have seen uh IPOP killed him. But you have um Ohanez and Debo saying, No, it's not IPOP, it's a it's a bunch of thugs. In fact, in fact, that's even why Ohanez had to come out to say that people should not falsely speculate without facts. Because they're claiming that it's not IPOP, that those blaming IPOP are doing it to cause divisions in Iwo land. But away from the politics of it, tell me your thoughts about the death of Dr. Akunyili. 0700-993-993-993. Don't forget, of course, if you are listening to us uh, from abroad, you can join the show via Skype. Skype is Nigeria Info FM. Nigeria Info FM. All right, so find us there and uh, call into the show. Uh, but the studio number is 0700-993-993-993. Now, of course, if the studio number isn't working, there's uh, WhatsApp where you can send your message across. Uh, WhatsApp is 080-959-75805 because it doesn't look like the studio numbers are working. Uh, there's also Facebook, so go and share your thoughts with us via Facebook. And I'll carry your thoughts uh, right here on the show. Facebook is Nigeria Info 99.3. Nigeria Info 99.3. You can also leave your comments on, um, what's it called now? You can leave your comments on YouTube. T YouTube is Nigeria Info FM. I think it's even a good thing that the phone lines are not working today because I have a feeling that, um, you know, this is this is the kind of conversation that just goes off, you know, just, just, just veers off like pew like goes off the bender but uh, i'm sure my tech team is working very hard um to get the phone lines back up but in the meantime let's go to facebook huh facebook nigeria info 99.3 let's see if we've got comments uh from our for our first story just yet no nope, we don't not yet all right let's try whatsapp perhaps we've got comments on whatsapp if you're abroad don't forget that you can join the show by calling us uh via skype skype is nigeria info 99.3 nigeria info 99.3 if you just tuned in and you're wondering what we're talking about uh our first story on today's big three is the senseless murder of dr chike akunyili dr chike akunyili is the widower of late professor dora akunyili and um uh, you know, you remember her as the director general of NAFDAC. Uh, she was also a minister uh, for information and reports claim that uh, gunmen killed Dr. Akunili in Anambra State on Tuesday. The Senate um, started um, uh, today's, uh, what's it called now? They started today's um, plenary with a minute's silence for him. 
And everyone's talking about this. It's one of the biggest stories in the country at the moment. All right, let's take a look at messages we've got so far here. Uh, Olushoga Jai from Ikorodu says, So unknown gunmen uh, murdered Dr. Chike Akuili yesterday in Anambra State. Uh, may his soul rest in peace. I am sure the Igbo people, especially those living abroad that support, defend and hail the activities of the unknown gunmen in the southeast, are happy and celebrating as usual. A land that gets watered with the blood of the innocent will fight back when it is tired of the innocent blood being used to water it. Olushoga Jai uh, in Ikurudu with that message. We've got uh, more messages coming in. The level of insecurity in the southeast is alarming. You didn't leave your name, but I see that that's an international number. Yomi Williams says the conspiracy of silence from known outspoken personalities from the southeast I miss the reports of needless killings and maiming from the region is worrisome. May the warring group heed the voice of wisdom. Yumi Williams there. Uh, please let the killers of that man be brought to book. It is quite unfair after all his wife gave to this nation. Then again, about the phone lines, can we be calling while WhatsApp? No, please don't call WhatsApp. That would just make my life. <laughs> please don't call WhatsApp. Just send us a message uh, via WhatsApp. We've got Adekule Wasiu Olaya from face on Facebook who says, What a sad news. Zero premium placed on human lives in this country. Killings everywhere. May the Lord comfort his family and grant him eternal rest. Thank you very much uh, for your message. All right, let's take a look at messages that we have perhaps on YouTube. Uh, hold on, let me let me log into YouTube so that I make sure that I don't miss those messages. But yeah, if you just joined the show, my question is, what do you think about the death of Dr. Akunili? Uh Do you think that uh, Dr. Akunili's death, that's the widow of... Um, of uh, late Dora Akuili, do you think that his death death is being politicized? Because uh, our correspondents in Anambra spoke with um, uh, Ohanes and Dibu, uh, and here's what they said: "It's a shock to Igbo community as a whole. I've heard it as barbaric, but in Igbo, it's an abomination. So it's shocking to the Igbo community. Secondly." I do not want to believe he is an IPOB that is different. You see, many hoodlums hide under IPOB to commit crimes of various kinds. The IPOB philosophy is the welfare of the Igbo. But uh, also they don't like me in terms of answers. Hoodlums hijack answers and give it entirely different interpretation and direction. The same thing is happening now. Hmm. He also uh, said a few more things. It's a shock to Igbo community as a whole. I've heard it as barbaric. So oh, apologies because you've already heard that sound so it's a it's the it's the same sound really that you just heard a repeat of but hey if you can't get through via the phone lines you can definitely join us uh via social media social media is zero seven uh sorry zero eight zero nine five nine uh, 75805. Imana Longwoka is actually our correspondent here, not in our number. Um, so he's the one who spoke with Ohanes and Debo, and they had that to say. So again, WhatsApp is 080 959 75805, and uh, Facebook is Nigeria Info 99.3, YouTube Nigeria Info FM. But if you are abroad, join the show via Skype. We've got Jubril Alabi calling in. Hello, Jubril. Hi, good morning. Good afternoon. Oh, sorry. Good afternoon. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm just heading to work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it's, so, it's so unfortunate, though. Like, uh, yeah, when you hear some stories come out of Nigeria, it's, it's really sad. It's really sad. And then we come up with all sort of speculations, and everybody say whatever, and after a few moments, it's, it's, it's a dead story. And... Something else comes up. Something as big as killing someone. It's 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 so unfortunate. Even no matter how what kind of person it is, even if it's anyone, 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 every life should matter. If it, if this thing comes up on, on on social media, they say they kill someone in America. We even in Nigeria we start shouting and making noise. Even this thing happens like every other day in Nigeria, like every minute. And unfortunately, no one cares, really, in, in the real sense. It, 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 it's, it's a function of a failed state. It, it's the function of a government that's not working. 
they don't care, they don't have anything in place to protect lives and properties. People can die as all they want as long as they are not the one dying. And unfortunately, it's now going all around. And no one is safe, not even the government officials, no one. And yet, they don't think anything is wrong with that. Like, it, it, it's really sad. It's really sad. I feel bad for the family. And unfortunately, these guys are people really that can afford to not live in Nigeria, but they decided to stay. Maybe they believe something could be right someday. They're trying to work something right. I don't know. But then, see what they're paying with. It's not worth it sometimes. When you think of these things, you, you just think, God help us. God help us. Hmm. Thank you. Good, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Jibril. Thank you very much for calling. Makes me happy that our listeners who are abroad can actually join the show. We've got uh, a message here from Rapture. Rapture is in through Larry. And Rapture says, I don't think IPOP can kill him, but no matter what, I want all Igbos in the East to fish out the killers so that we can clear IPOP. All right, Rapture. Interesting name. Thank you very much for sending your message in. Let's uh, take a look at more message uh, messages. Philip from Ecotton says, Hi, Sandra. The murder of Dr. Aquili is a disgrace. What will this... Sorry about that. What will this? What, what will these people gain in killing innocent souls? They should not forget that one day they will give account of their evil deeds. Politics or no politics, it's not acceptable. All right, Philip. Thank you for your message. 99.3, hello. Hey, hi. Hi, what's your name? It's Kenny. Kenny from, uh, from Finland. Hi, Kenny from Finland. Oh, yeah, I have a story. It's such a sad story about the late Dr. Aquinelli. Mm-hmm. Because I don't know what's wrong with the Nigeria as a whole, where we can't provide security for people. Everybody just die as if they're animals. And the sad thing about everything is this: no justice is going to be served for this family. This family has given a lot of it for the country, mm. and yet they are treated as though just anyhow. I don't know what becomes of the, the children. Would they still have any any zeal for the country? If I, personally, for me, I feel so sad. I, I'm like, what's what a country? Do I still want to come back? Do I still really want to do things in this country? Because you are not even sure of what can happen tomorrow to you. You are not even sure of what can happen to whatever you plan, whatever things you're thinking about investing back or giving back to your country. Just keep hearing stories like this every day, death everywhere. It's so sad, man. I feel so sad and terrible for the family and for the country as a well. whole. Hmm. It is well. Kenny, thank you so much for calling. We appreciate it. All right, let's take a look at Facebook. Perhaps we've got more comments there now, but we have a lot of comments on WhatsApp, actually. <laughs> Did it pursue me? Uh, Akande Rotimi says, I believe Dr. Queenly was killed by hoodlums. There are many in that war junction. I was robbed by those thugs at war when I was serving in Anambra. Thank God I wasn't killed then. Akande Rotimi, thank you very much for your message. Uh, that message was on YouTube. Yes, you can leave us comments on YouTube. YouTube as well, and we'll take them as we go along. Um, comedian uh, Promise Emmanuel says, I don't think IPOB has a hand in the death of Dr. Akuyeli. Uh Noah Kuye just says, this country uh, is not safe anymore, and that's it. All right. Here are more messages via WhatsApp. Another bad news for Nigeria. I'm waiting and looking forward to the day that we're going to hear only good news from this country. Human life is so cheap. Sanji, uh, with that message. Sandra uh, Ohaneza still refuses to call out ESN of IPOB. After all, it is public knowledge that they've been unleashing mayhem on Ibus all in a bit to ensure that their purpose to make their words be law stands. Recall that there's current threat released by IPOB regarding October 1. What a pity. Ike Chiku from Newe with that message. Yes, Newe has a really rough, really rough with um, um, ESN and IPOB as a group. Uh, Oche in Victoria Island says, it's sad to hear about this sad news. His wife was one of the best things to happen to Nigeria's health and information sector. Uh, Oche, you're right. Ikechukwi Nikorodu says, It's very unfortunate that people die this way. It's an evil act. May his soul rest in peace. I therefore challenge the state government to ensure that the problem of insecurity uh, is brought to a stop. All right. 
Let's take a look at one final message. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll talk about our second story. Well, we'll WhatsApp about it because, well, we can't really talk. Um, Sandra, how's work going? For the yeah, for the killing of Dr. Chike Akunili, he was not killed by IPOB. It was a mastermind assassination. Let them do the investigation very well. That is why uh, Gulak was killed in Imo State and it was that, that is how Gulak was killed and it was tagged IPOB. All right, let's take that break. We'll be right back. In commemoration of the International Girl Child Day 2021, FINA Multimedia Concepts presents the Win Her Conference 2021. Theme, active, active, activating women's sports at the grassroots. Speakers include Queen Lizzie, Shisom Ezeoke, Liz Okogu, and Haji Zainab Saleh. Date, 11th of October, 2021. Venue, Terracotta. Time, 10 a.m. prompt. This event is powered by First Bank. Supported by Kuma Zobia Info, Femi and Began, Mini-Me, Nasco, Wilson's Lemonade, and Hey Guy Football. From Katakata, Nigeria independence during 61 years. You sell fifth gate independence from Market Wahala, Omni B, go sum up the tarry tellers with prizes where reach millions of naira. Go celebrate. To chocolate this one, use promo code FREEDOM when you want check out. Make your place computer, go shop.omnibees.com or download the app to enjoy this one. Proudly, Nigeria. This better promo will end for 3rd of October. We're back. We're back. We're back. We're Nigeria Indeed, we are back. I'm Sandra S. Zekwasili. This is The Big Three. On The Big Three, we take a look at the biggest stories of the day, the stories that uh, lots of Nigerians are talking about. And we bring it here for you to lend your voice. And our second story on The Big Three today takes us to Kaduna, as well as our third story, to be honest. Nase Arufa is criticizing the Southern governor's demand for a Southern president in 2023. Yesterday on The Big Three, we talked about the Northern Governors Forum, saying that the demand was unconstitutional. Now, I should point out that um, last year, Arufa said that in the interest of fairness, the South should get the presidency next. But in response to the Lagos Accord of the Southern Governors, El Rufai had this to say, quote, We are not saying there cannot be rotational presidency. It can be done. But you have to come and sit with the politicians in the North and dialogue. And then we agree to give our support to the South. But no one has the right to sit in Lagos or Port Harcourt and say whether Northerners want it or not. They must relinquish power to the South. That is wrong. It is not how we do politics. And it is, in fact, foolish. So Al Rufai is saying that the problem isn't that the Southern governors want this, that the problem is the approach. What do you think about this? It's a sentiment I've heard a number of people repeat. Is the approach of the Southern governors foolish? As uh, Governor Al Rufai says. Was it bound to alienate the Northern governors? Some people disagree. Some people say that before you can start negotiating or asking someone for what you want, you need to take a decision on what you want. And that's what the Southern governors have done. They met among themselves. They agreed on a common goal. The question now is, how do they intend to achieve that goal? Governor El Rafai seems to think that they want to, quote, sit in Lagos or Port Harcourt. But the question is... Is that really what the Southern governors are planning? Do you think that all the Southern governors want to do is make these demands? Or do you think that they have a plan for getting these things done? Is El Rafai correct to call the Southern governor's approach foolish? We don't have phone numbers, unfortunately, so you can't call into the show, except you are abroad. If you are abroad, you can call in via Skype. Skype is Nigeria Info FM. Uh, usually, uh, for those in Nigeria, you could call the regular phone lines, but we don't have those today. But we do have social media, so you can share your thoughts there. Facebook is Nigeria Info 99.3. We're streaming live, and you can share your uh, thoughts uh, in the comments. Same for YouTube. We're also streaming live there. You can also 
share your thoughts as comments uh, on YouTube. On uh, WhatsApp, that's probably the easiest way to get in touch. WhatsApp is 080-959-75805. Uh, President Sandra, I just love how things are shaping up politically. I just hope the North maintains its stand and insists on this brouhaha about 2023 presidency. It'll be interesting. Hope they hold their ground on the issue. We are all living witnesses how Jonathan was shipped out just because the North alleged that sh that Jonathan used their term. That's a message from Babatunde Fasanyo. Babatunde, thank you very much for your message. Babatunde also says that the insecurity situation in the East is worrisome and is sure a source of concern. Though the security situation is not rest restricted to the East only, but every section. A top Air Force man was kidnapped in Lagos yesterday, so our security agencies should double up and brace up in tackling the situation. Worrying times in Nigeria. Babatunde, uh, you are right. The presidency also agrees that uh, these are worrying times and they, they're making plans to recruit more police officers. Uh, I hear that they want to start recruiting 20,000 uh, for a start. Hello. Thanks for calling us. Hello. Hello. Um, Sandra. Yes. What's your name, sir? Um, Frank. From Hi, Indonesia, Frank. Indonesia, Jakarta. Welcome, Frank. From Indonesia? Um, I don't know. Yeah, Indonesia, I'm calling on Skype. All right, go ahead. Um, maybe I should talk on the first topic first, uh, the killing of uh, the gentleman. I really don't know how it's going to, how the kids are going to feel after the mother served the country, mm -hmm. only for her to lost, only for her to lose her life and the father in another tragic way. You know, mm -hmm. the kids. What will be their fate for Nigeria? Let us you know. Think about it for once. Mm -hmm. My dad dying tragically like that. My mom. And these are people that gave their all. You find out that, man, we are really, really breathing monsters, kind of, because no one is going to be happy having <coughs> such. Then for the southern governors and the northern governors, mm. I think they're just playing politics with the minds of the people. You okay. know, I think they, they already know what they want for themselves. You know, they're just playing the ethnic cards and... No, and the people are really falling for it. It's either they're using ethnicity or they're using, using religion, you know. Mm. But the truth still remains that for all fairness, you know, I think the president should come to the South. Thank you. It's my first time calling the studio. I'm glad you called us today, Frank. We do hope you have a fantastic day. It's uh, 3.34. Chris from Amur says the Southern governors said presidency must come from the South. The must means non-negotiable. So El Rafai is 100% correct to their statement is foolish. Please ask the Southern governors to sign up to not be a running mate to any presidential candidate from the North. Chris from Amour, thank you for your message. Politicians are just playing games. Uh, this person says, God help us on our nation. That's Godi Nikeja with that message. Godi, thank you very much. It's high time we know those that own Nigeria. Uh, Easy Boy from Ogun State says, let the South stand their ground, uh, even though it, it will not come easy. Okay. All right. Thanks for your message. Uh, Chike says that uh, Chike Akuniri's death will bring a lot of doom to some people soon. Northern elders are now feeling like they are our colonial masters. 2023 uh, is coming. All right. Uh, thank you very much for your message. Someone wants to confirm that this is Nigeria Info FM radio station on WhatsApp. Yes, it is. It is Nigeria Info FM's WhatsApp. Uh, let's take a look at more messages here. What's up again? It's 080-959-75805. Colette from Ikotun. I don't think you... you I think perhaps that message was for Wazovia. It's definitely not for us. Uh, this message here didn't come with a name, but he says, El Rafa is 100%. Southern governors should play politics and dialogue with the North as power is not served a la carte. All right. Um, interesting comment there. It is well with us in this country, Shay from Ibejuleki says, the leaders should just do things right. Shay, thanks for your message. I think we've got Jubril Alabi calling back. Jubril, is that you? Yeah, hi. Hi. Sorry, it's me again. Okay. Yeah, I just thought of saying something about this, uh, you know, insistence of uh, the, the southern governors asking for, you know, the presidency to come to Nigeria, uh, to, 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 sorry, to the south, mm -hmm. it's 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 
kind of funny, though, because uh, you see, our strength in the South, I'm from the South, okay. but unfortunately, I'm not going to support this one. Okay. You know, our, our strength from the, in the South is education. We know that. But unfortunately, we don't even use that uh, uh, ability to the fullest. Okay. You know, like, is it really constitutional to make, to make such statements? The truth is, it's not. Okay. If you if you say it's Nigeria and mm. you think you deserve to be the president, you go do your campaign, you do what you have to do and get in power. Not not forcing people to put you there whether they like it or not. It's if you say, Yeah, is it fair? Well, but unfortunately, like we, we continue to say fair and fair and fair, but I mean, if we say we're in democracy mm. we should not be really talking about that sentiment, if you ask me, is sentiment that should not be, it should not be part of democracy. Okay. It might be, but it's not a legitimate request. It's not a legal request. It's not, it's not constitutional. Hmm. Whoever should be in power works for it. And unfortunately, it's still because things are not working. Because the truth is, does it really matter who is the president or not? Should really, really, do I care? Like, I don't know Justin Trudeau, for instance. I don't know where he comes from or wherever, but whatever policies they're making is for the nation, not for some set of people. Right. So it's still because right. it's not working. So that's why we worry. I, I shouldn't be worried if it's coming from the east, from the south, from the west, mm -hmm. from the north. Mm -hmm. As long as things are working, everybody is getting what they should get. You have safety, you have food, you have everything. You won't even remember who the president is. It shouldn't matter. All right, Jibra. Thank you. That's my All right. Thank you for calling Thank back. You. All right, let's go back to Facebook. I see we have lots of comments there now. Uh, Prince Leo or Zemina says, the insecurity situation in the entire East is gradually getting out of hand while everyone is blaming it on IPOP, which is the highest misgiving. These killings everywhere in the country must stop. For El Rufai's reply to the Southern governor's decision, you can feel the arrogance in his position. Uh, all right, uh, Prince Leo, thanks for your message. Stephen Stanley says the northern governors will eventually give in to the southern governors' demands, but they will use the VAT and open grazing issues as a bargaining chip. Ade Kunlewasi Olaya says the sense of entitlement of the northern section of the country is worrisome. Currently, we have a northerner as a president, and we can all see how things are. Um, uh, okay. I can't take the rest of that message, unfortunately. But thank you very much for uh, messaging us. We've got uh, Tosing Ayodele who says, Al Rufai should be more explanatory or are the media twisting the issue? There's a need to dialogue with other regions, but not a must to seek permission from other regions. Raymond Oke Okoeko says, if the ESN group are really doing their job, why is it that they cannot stop these killings? Optimistic Oriomi says, yes, Al Rufai is right because the rotational is not in our constitution. Our southern leaders are not smart at all. Lazarus Obisike says, it obtains to me that restructuring uh, is speaking E equals MC um, square equals to your tenso Israel. <laughs> okay, Lazarus. Sunday CK says, if the North will not welcome the idea of rotational presidency, mm, uh, Sunday CK also says, if Ohaneze can boldly claim that it is not IPOB, then Ohaneze should boldly tell us who the killer is. Oh, Sunday, that's such a... Uh, he paid me a compliment. That's what I'm owing at, not, you know, the Ohaneze comment. Uh, we've got Okpe uh, Konye Fahu says, uh, may the soul of Dr. Akwindi rest in peace. Uh, Sandra Noye, your friend, they make me happy. <laughs> well, unfortunately, she can't call today because we don't have the phone lines uh, back up. Let's go back to WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. Sandra, the drafting of the 1999 constitution ignores our peculiarity in terms of choosing the president. Southerners could never become president unless they kneel at the feet of the North. The constitution should be amended to, to accommodate rotational presidency. You me with that message. Sandra, I love you and how you're handling issues. You had, oh, Margaret works with FRC. And Margaret, thank you very much for your compliment. Kende Oye Makinwa is on the line. Hi, Kende. Yeah, hi. Hi, welcome. Quickly comment about uh, this, what we're talking about now. Yes, go ahead. Okay, El Rufai seems inconsistent nowadays. Okay. You remember, you recall, 
at some point, he said he was not going to pay ransom. He was going to pay ransom. At some point, he said he was going to pay ransom. At some point, he said he was going to put his children in the schools, in the public school. At some point, he had to take his children. So I don't really take his words so seriously. Okay. But concerning the issue, in, in an ideal situation, hmm. rotational presidency would not be a discussion. Hmm. But if, are we in an ideal situation in Nigeria? The answer is definitely no. Because we don't have a mature democracy yet. So hence, the discussion will still be on the table. But if you were to ask me, I would say he who has the best policy or best campaign should be the leader, should be the person to rule, whether he comes from the north or from the south. And what I would just advise Nigerians is to look at the manifestos of those who are presenting themselves to, uh, who are aiming to rule us in the coming election because what will eventually matter is who has the best manifesto and who has the will and the real consensus and the capability to really lead this country. And I think we have already, only that people are not looking in that direction. Mm. People are only looking in the direction of PDP, APC. We have other people from other parties. I don't want to campaign for anybody, but personally we have this man who is from the, the former deputy CBN governor, I don't know who that was. He has a very good manifesto. I don't know why we can't try that man out. I'm not, a, I'm not from the southeast, I'm mm. from the southwest. But mm. when you look at someone giving a good manifesto, Nigerians should be able to open their mouth and see that these people have a good will and a good view to rule this country for us. But it is what it is. <laughs> we are not yet in an ideal situation. Mm. I hope we'll get there one day. Kende, where Thanks. are you calling us from? Ah, again from Finland. Finland, so. Kende. Thank you so much uh, for calling. Uh, we've got uh, messages here on WhatsApp, so let's take a look at them. Sandra, to follow federal character, um, power should go to the power should go to the south next. Um, southeast person who is competent in economics and security issues. Example, uh, Peter Obi. Nigeria needs competence now. David, with that message there. David, thank you very much. Um, actually, El Rufai is right, but presidency, presidency is expected in the South. It's a pity that there's no coercive force among Southern leaders. A pharmacist uh, sent that message to us. His name is Tunde. Tunde, thank you very much for your message. Um, good afternoon, Sandra. It's not written in the Constitution that power must rotate across the regions. If we have not been so divided along ethnic lines, we should not be talking about this. We need a president for all, not a Hausa, Igbo, or Yoruba president. The killing in Anambra is so unfortunate. This is just a reality of where we are. Lawal Abimbola in Ogba with that message. Uh, Alex says, while it may be desirable to have a southern president, it is not practical to just sit down and demand it without negotiation. In my view, it is actually foolish because uh, just as they can demand, the others can reject it. If we've been obliging them before now, it underscores the foolishness of the South. Alex Thanks for your message. Uche from Satellite Town says, why are the Southern governors sounding so cheap? I don't know what that means, Uche. Uh, it's so sad, the death of uh, Mr. Queen Lee. Zero security everywhere. When the head is not correct, what can the body do? That's a message uh, from, well, you didn't leave your name, but thank you for uh, messaging us on the show. Uh, Nigerian politicians are just playing with our emotions here because I don't expect any of the so-called older politicians to be part of the next presidential election for now. That's a message from Rita. Rita, thank you for your message. Uh, let's take a look at this one here. Uche from Songo says, nobody will ever believe that it's IPOP, but when they say Fulani herdsmen, everybody will believe it. Hypocrites everywhere. Uche from Songo, thank you for your message. El Rufai uh, is right. Southern governors should negotiate all regions contested in years past. Prince from Shango Tedo with that message. Unfortunately, you can't call into the show because our service providers are doing us dirty. Um, both our phone lines are down at the moment. The one for the men, the one for the women. But you can be a part of the show uh, by getting on social media, right? So Facebook is Nigeria Info 99.3. Uh, YouTube is Nigeria Info FM. Let's call Stacy. Stacy says she's been trying to call. So let's give her a call 
and see if that's much better. Yes, uh, we give a call to our listeners who are abroad. So if you are listening to us from a foreign country, you can call us via Skype. Skype is Nigeria Info Firm. Nigeria Info Firm. Just search for it and then give us a call there. And we'll bring your, we'll put your call um, live on air. We finally have Stacy on the line. Hi, Stacy. Stacy, can you hear us? I'm a male, not a female. Oh, Stacy's male. I'm sorry. Hi, go ahead. I just want to appreciate Nigeria for, for giving us the opportunity to uh, express our views and our opinions. Right. And I appreciate y'all. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Oh, is that it? Okay. All right. <laughs> well, thank you for thanking us. We like um, people who are grateful. Let's take a look at uh, Facebook now. Let's go back to Facebook. Mm. Okay. Adekunle Agbolagade. I hope I'm right. I, pro- I, I apologize if I pronounce it wrong. But Adekunle says El Rufai is wrong. El Rufai is right. It is wrong for any region to say that they must produce a president. Any region that wants the president should play the politics. Okay. All right. Thank you for your message. Uh, let's go to YouTube and see the comments that we have there. Because I just don't want to leave anyone uh any person behind because i'm a nice person alfred alex gimba says northern governors are not looking for solutions to insecurity in their region rather they're talking about who will take over aso rock come 2023 all right um thanks for your message speaking of let's uh let me tell you of course that um our third story um, is still from the north. We're still going to bring you a story uh, from Kaduna where El Rufai um, is making plans to also shut down. Well, he's announced that they're also going to shut down telecoms in the um, in the state. We'll bring you that story after we take a few more comments. Um, Akandero to me on, on, on YouTube says, even if the North agrees to cede power to the South, the South will fight over it and end up giving it to the region that doesn't deserve it yet. I believe it's the turn of the Southeast to produce the president. All right. Let's go back to Facebook. We've been on YouTube um, long enough. On Facebook, um, Ayodeji Ishiaka Shuaib says, conspiracy of silence from the Igbo leaders. They are quick to come and say IPOB is not responsible for the death of Dr. Akwili. Same excuse that they, u- con- that they use uh, to continue the stay at home. Why can't IPOB come out and enforce the suspension of sit at home so that same IPOB will apprehend the unknown gunmen? Uh, when things spoil, it spreads everywhere to everyone. Only this time, um, it's in the east. All right, Ayo. Ayo is in a jar with that message. Ademola Deke says, um, <laughs> Ademola is asking me about last night's match. Well, I didn't watch last night's match, uh, unfortunately, but thank you very much. Eh? Let's um, b- uh, perhaps bring you our third story now. Um, uh, hold on. Okay, I have this message here, and let me take it before it, this person kills me. Because <laughs> you have to say, please take my message. What's wrong with the must language used by the southern governor that the northern elites and people did not use towards 2015 presidential election? Second base, Jerry. I don't know what that means. The northern people used more provocative language going to the 2015 presidential election. On the killing of Dr. Akmili in Anambra State, it's painful and it's much it's more painful realizing that Igbo people are killing their best brains. Too bad. Have a great day, Sandra. Omo is my name. Omo, thank you very much for your message. This country now, wow, John Paul from Amor says, unknown gunmen everywhere. That means that no one is safe in this country. North or south, we just need a vibrant and strong president. We're tired of medical checkups in London. <laughs> is that a shade to Tinubu, who is in London at the moment? We've got more messages here. Obaino from Shomolu says that um, uh, he weeps for this nation, killings everywhere. Some remnants that call themselves leaders are clamoring for zoning in presidency. Who did presidency help? See where uh, the current president has taken us today. Okay. All right, then. Thank you very much 
for your message. Let's bring you that final story, right? Where in Kaduna, the state governor, El Rufai, who we talked about in our, uh, in our second story, uh, says that um, Kaduna will also need a telecom shutdown so that they can battle insurgents. El Rufai talked about this in a media chat in Kaduna. He spoke in Hausa, but the Daily Trust provided a translation. It says, quote, we've been advised by the military and other security agencies to shut down telecommunication services in certain local government areas. But we're waiting for the security agencies to tell us which specific areas and when. But I want the people of Kaduna State to know that if they give us the go ahead tomorrow, that's um, today, Wednesday, we'll shut down tomorrow. I will not mention the local governments to be affected, but the local governments that are constantly being tormented by bandits know themselves. As soon as we get the nod from security agents, then the people of Kaduna State will know that uh, we will shut down telecommunications to give security agents the maximum cooperation to carry out operations in those areas, end quote. So telecom shutdown is following the um, insurgents from Zamfara to Kaduna. But we talked about this on Monday. I don't know if you remember. There are questions about whether the shutdown is working in Zamfara. I told you about the traditional ruler who talked about raids in his communities because, according to him, the soldiers who came at the start of the shutdown have left. So the key questions here are how well or how badly is the shutdown working in Zamfara? If it is working, why are we getting these reports of the bandits going about and having a field day? If it's not working, why is it being extended to Kaduna? Now, we're getting more calls via Skype, but we have a break coming up in about 1 minute 30 seconds. But let's go to Skype and see if we can um, maybe take some of those calls, right? Because, hey, at all, at all, nine bad pass. At least we're having, like, our international um, listeners joining the show. So let's call uh, Stanley back. Stanley Izoga tried to call into the show earlier on. Let's call him back. While that call is connecting, I'll take a few messages from Facebook. Um, uh, no, actually from WhatsApp. Sandra, the politicians are not looking for a way to solve Nigeria's problems, but just after who will be president. Now you can see that it's because they only want to enrich themselves and they're not concerned with all we are passing through in the country. I beg, please, let's find a good leader. Both northern and southern leaders have all failed since independence. Mjolenski with that message. Mjolenski is in Akute. Hello, Stanley. Thank you for uh, joining us. Hello, Stanley, are you there? Ah, Stanley's in there. Or if he is, his connection isn't very good. So perhaps Stanley will give us a call back. We'll take a break, Lagos. We'll come back and take a few more messages and then bring you today's glass ceiling. Nigeria Info will be right back. Okay, go ahead, buy my cat, just to open. 99.3 Nigeria Info. We are more than just radio. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Nigeria Info FM. Check us out on Facebook at Nigeria Info 99.3. Follow us on Twitter at Nigeria Info FM and on Instagram at Nigeria Info FM Lagos for live updates as it happens. 99.3 Nigeria Info.